As many as 59 million Americans have thyroid problems, and many more remain undiagnosed. Now, if you're feeling just a little out of sorts, you may be suffering from hypothyroidism. Here with a lesson in Thyroid 101 are doctors Michael Gadway and Josh Red. Good morning. Welcome good back, morning. doctors. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to have you back with us today. Thanks for having us. Talking about something so important, and you know, we've had this discussion a few times, so some people may have caught it, but you say that your clinic really has had a lot of inquiries about hypothyroidism so this information is really worth repeating and so I want people to really listen up I read the list of symptoms of a low thyroid and was really amazed at the severity of some of them and dr. red you founded Red River Health and Wellness yeah. so you know this this place is really special because it specializes in in medicine that deals with the dysfunctions that, yeah, that some of us don't even realize we have yeah yeah we, we try to get to the underlying cause of things rather than just trying to treat the symptoms we mm -hmm. try to figure out the different imbalances that might be associated with people's chronic disorders yes. and, and kind of work there. So. so what causes a low thyroid? The, the number one cause is a disease called Hashimoto's disease. Mm -hmm. This is an autoimmune disease where the patient's immune system, instead of attacking bad things, is now attacking its own tissue. In this mm -hmm. case, it's the thyroid. And so it's not even a thyroid problem. The thyroid, in this case, is just the victim. Right. It's, the auto, you know, it's the actual autoimmune response, which is the big issue that you need to focus on. So Yeah, there's a lot more to it than just the thyroid itself. That's a lot so, more. Yeah, can you elaborate a little bit more on some of the symptoms that we yeah. will notice with a, low, with a low thyroid? Yeah, I mean, as far as the symptoms are concerned, uh, depression, fatigue, mm -hmm. inability to lose weight is a big one. Uh, anxiety, restlessness, insomnia, uh, headaches, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different symptoms that go on with it. Intestinal problems are, are a big issue too, bowel problems. So we really need to pay attention to these things and not just say, well, I'm just, you know, just I've been getting a lot of headaches lately, no big deal. You have right. to really look at this as this could possibly be something that is causing a low thyroid issue for you. Yeah, yeah. And it's important to know that. And Dr. Gadway, I want to mention that you manage the Albuquerque office of Red River Health and Wellness. So if someone comes in and they say, you know, I think I'm having these kind of symptoms, what would be the next step? The next step, Nikki, is to realize that you don't have to feel bad all day long. Many of our patients are suffering and pushing themselves through the day because right. they're relentlessly fatigued and tired. Mm -hmm. So if you feel this way, it's not normal. What you do is you make, give a phone call to us and we can help you because we have the tools to empower you to feel better. Yeah, and I must say, just from personal experience talking to you myself, you know, you really do take the time and you really go through everything. And sometimes it's a little overwhelming for a patient or somebody who's thinking, I might have something wrong. And that's for right. you to sit and, dis and just explain to them and give them that personal care, I think that's a wonderful touch and it makes people feel like it's okay. Yeah, and, yeah. and beyond that step, how would you treat a low thyroid if you find out that you do have it? Yeah, well, well, the big thing is most of the patients that we see they know they already have a little thyroid. Mm -hmm. the, the only problem is they don't know what's causing it, okay? And so mm -hmm. really because most of the, the reason why people have a little thyroid is, is not the thyroid itself, it's right. the autoimmune disease. We take everything we know about thyroid problems and we crumble up in our hand and we throw it in the trash because yeah. in this case, the thyroid is just the victim and most of these patients are already on a thyroid hormone okay. but nothing's being done to the actual mechanism of the well. So our whole goal is we go in and do all the extensive medical tests and try to pinpoint and see exactly why they're having a low thyroid to begin with yeah. and then work to get those imbalances function a lot better. In most of these cases, you can't cure it. You can tame it, but you can't cure it. And right. So it takes a lot of effort on our part to, to find the problems and, and get those function a lot better, but it takes a lot of effort on the patient's part as well. So. Absolutely, because you're dealing with treating, not curing, and so that's exactly. a lifelong process. Yeah, it's a management, yeah, it's definitely a management tool there. So. Well, who's most likely to have a low thyroid? Is anybody more inclined than others? Yeah, mostly our patients are women middle-aged, um, about 10 to 1, female to male. Wow, that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty big deal. So yep. women, listen up. I mean, and I, I guess a lot of us just want to know, can it be avoided altogether, or is it just one of those things that just happens? Uh, unfortunately, it can't. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not any research that shows that you can. Uh, with the females, a lot of the, the big problems that we're seeing with all the research and literature out there now mm -hmm. is estrogen surges. So, oh, you yeah. know, going through puberty, birth of the children, um, you know, going through menopause, mm -hmm. that's usually when it will turn that gene on and then from that point on they'll have that immune response starting to attack the tissue and causing problems. So there really is a direct correlation between your hormones and your thyroid? Oh yeah, you betcha. There's going to yeah. be a lot of different things. There's, you know, when it comes to Hashimoto's there's a lot of different triggers. Okay. Uh, whether it be eight to ten different physiological imbalances that might cause it to flare up. Mm -hmm. There could be a couple food intolerances that cause it to, fl to flare yeah, up. That's and hormones are a big, big, big trigger. So if we have a lot of hormonal imbalances, that patient that has Hashimoto is going to be suffering a lot more. It's a, it, yeah, I mean, that's just the way it is, and people just mm -hmm. have to understand that. And so, 
it's very typical to see similar results. And so that's why I was saying, you know, if you feel overwhelmed, just know you're not alone. Let's share some of those typical results that a lot of people are seeing. Yeah, I think a big thing is a lot of our patients, they'll have anywhere from about zero to 10 good days and they just can't function. They right. just don't have a good quality of life. Mm -hmm. And our whole goal, like we said before, you can't cure it, but what we can do is get them to where they have 20 to 25 good days and they're yes. able to function a lot better and have a lot better quality of life and be a mom again and a wife again and those types of things that they weren't able to do. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's lots of really good things that we can do and obviously be able to lose weight and, and you know. A huge part of it. And then a big thing too is we want to teach them and educate them and show them what to do and what not to do so mm -hmm. that they're the expert in their own health as well. So they know how to manage their disease and condition a lot more efficiently. Great point. And, and beyond going into something that's a severe treatment or an extreme treatment, I, I really like the fact that in, when we talked personally, mm -hmm. you said, you know, you can start by just changing your diet, changing some of your habits, drink more water, get on a schedule where you're eating more meals a day and, you know, things like that. And so it's not like you have to just jump into something drastic. You can take it gradually, right, doctor? Right, and our program actually is a gradual program. Mm -hmm. So we don't remove everything from you right away because it becomes a burden for you. So right. we actually have the tools to navigate you through the process, mm -hmm. and we take you step by step by step so you don't feel lost, you feel empowered. Absolutely, and let's tell everybody a little bit more about the services that are offered at the center so that they know what they can expect. Yeah, so I mean, we deal with a lot of uh, blood chemistry. We deal with a lot of different uh, chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. and especially Hashimoto's and things like yeah. that. But um, I mean, if anyone has any type of chronic issue, uh, I think it's a good place to start to get sure. a really extensive blood test and figure out in detail, you know, rather than just treating the symptoms, what's causing it. Absolutely. And let's tell our viewers exactly how they can contact you. So they can go to our website for a free consultation uh, or for a free brochure at uh, redriverhealthandwellness.com or you can call us at 505-247-1000. At, uh, <laughs> Dr. Red, Dr. Gadway, thank you both yeah, so much. It's you. been a pleasure and we'll look forward to our next discussion because we want to keep everybody healthy first yes, and foremost. Thank you,